Hi, everyone. This is our project, which we're naming Sketchy Face. Um, our basic idea here is that we want to be able to generate a real looking image of a face from a very rough and simple doodle of a face. So for example, if you were to doodle a person with glasses, maybe with facial hair, maybe with long hair, we would like to be able to recreate that as, as well as possible. Um, there's been some work in this field. Uh, you can see some of the images, some examples of the work that's been done. Our work is going to be slightly different than all of these, and we'll explain more how later. Um, first, we'll talk about some of the data sets that exist in this field to make this type of work possible. Uh, so there are some related data sets. Um, for example, the Sketchy database. Um, it is a very big data set with sketch and real photo pairs. Uh, the interesting part is um, the sketches are drawn by amateur drawers. Um, so basically, they're um, very um, rough and uh, can can be gener can be used to generate very detailed real world photos. And the second one is next one, please. Mm. Um, there is also a face sketch database. Uh, uh, as you can see, there are some. They're generated by uh, three data set, uh, three different kinds uh, data sets, and um, all the big, all the real photos um, are each is paired with an artistic sketch, and they're not um, rough sketches. And also, there are some. Uh, next one, please. Uh, yeah, and there are also some face data sets. Um, for example, Flickr faces HQ, and they're crawled and cropped by um, Flickr um, with um, uh, high resolution um, images. And also there are, um, there is a still at A data set and they have every um, image has uh, more than 40 attributes annotations. Yeah, um, that's one. So there are some, um, um, so Zuin is gonna talk about some previous work of uh, our project. Yeah, so in the previous work section, we reviewed several models that was developed for a similar goal. Um, and the first one is a sketch again, um, which is a conditioned GAN that converts sketch into photorealistic image, um, even it is not confined in a human face image synthesis. So sketch again takes a paired input to train, uh, one for sketch and another for the ground truth photorealistic image. I have emphasized them in the left figure. Um, and the drawback of the sketch again, as you may find in the right figure, is the low image quality and the faithless synthesis, meaning that the synthesis the image uh, can be de de deviated from the intention of, of the sketch. Um, next, please. Uh, nevertheless, sketch again points out the solution for the problem of lack of sketch data, as shown in the left figure. Uh, which is to create edge map from the real images. Um, and sketch again, sketch again also taught us the key difference between the edge map and the sketch. Um, it's also on, in the right figure. And um, it is suggested using the, to use a dynamic, dynamic ratio of edge and sketch to train the model. Next, please. And the next model we reviewed is the style again, uh, which proposed a novel generator for GAN architecture. Um, as shown in the red box, latent, latent vector direct, uh, was direct, direct, sorry, directly uh, fed into the generator in a traditional GAN, whereas um, an intermediate latent space was created in a style GAN before the generator. So the latent feature space um, is, is disentangled and allows quite flexible controls uh, in a generated image. Uh, in the, and the latent feature from the multiple latent vector can thus be mixed and generate a mixed style image. Next, please. Um, just like the, the one showing in the slides. Um, uh, and also besides, style again uh, provides the, uh, the state of art video quality of synthesized image uh, currently. Uh, next, please. So to the extension of a style GAN, an encoder, uh, a encoder was developed um, to convert an image into latent feature that can be fed into a generator. So uh, which is shown in a figure. 
Um, and next, please. So such encoders significantly expands the application of style gain. Uh, generating image from the sketch is one of the potential use. Uh, the specific method is to generate latent feature from a sketch first and then mix it with another latent feature from a normal image. Um, the PSP model has the st state of art performance of synthesizing uh, images from sketches right now. Um, but the potential drawback is that more or less precise sketches are required. Um, yeah, next please. And the last work we reviewed is the deep face drawing, which adopts a local to, to, glo to sorry, a local to global structure. Um, specifically, the model learns, the, and learns and extracts small features like the mouse, eyes, and nose uh, in, in the face, and then uh, regenerates into a high quality photorealistic image by, mix, by mixing the, the learned features um, with some complicated algorithms. <laughs> Uh, the quality of the synthesized image is pretty good, uh, but the biggest problem of the model is uh, it can only handle the frontal faces. Um, yeah, uh, as shown in the slides. And that is all for the previous works. Uh, let's get to the part of actually our contribution. Uh, the ultimate goal is to generate photorealistic images based on the rough sketches and we incorporated that in several steps of our pipeline. Uh, next slide. First, we have to create a data set and we do not actually use any existing data set. Instead, we generated our own data set by using pre-trained model of StyleGAN. It uses latent vector as an input and creates photorealistic image as an output. And the advantage of this method that it, we can generate as much data as we can in our case, we generate 10K random photorealistic images. Next slide. Uh, on this step, we have to transform image into the sketch. So there are two phases. First, we used base net model to remove the background from the image. So we prevent uh, extra noise. And then we use HED method to generate sketches. And we used HET method with four different levels of complexity. So you can see that on the bottom right corner. Uh, we also applied Gaussian blurring. And so the whole process uh, is similar as we used in SketchGAN paper. Yeah, so there are a couple ways in which we want to train this model and we want to see which one works the best. So the core is just a VGG16, really any um, any feature extractor of images could have worked here, but we just chose VGG16. And the first thing we tried is to just use a pre-trained frozen VGG with a fully connected layer on top. Um, so the issue with these models, such as the VGG16, is that they're trained on colorful data, which means there's three channels to the data. But however, our sketches only have one channel since they're black and white. So for a pre-trained frozen model, what we do is we just multiply the same sketch three times down the channel axis, and we basically get a three channel image like that. And then another method is that we're gonna unfreeze the, G the VGG and then also at the beginning add a convolutional layer that goes from one channels to three. Um, the final method is to pre-train the VGG on the sketchy data set using the same method as the, as the second one, but we will use it to predict uh, what category a sketch belongs to. Um, we also have a sketch complexity scheduler, where here we can see that there is four different styles of sketches. The top four images here in that bottom right figure, there is they just get simpler and simpler and they remove more edges as they go down. So taking kind of from sketch again was this idea where you start with a better sketch that's more clear and then you train your way down to the simpler sketches. So we have a weight system where the probability of getting picked is gonna be higher for the, the more complicated sketch at the beginning and lower at the end. Um, so here's kind of summed up our whole method here. 
is we take this latent style of X there, we pass it in through the style again to get a, a real looking image. We crop out the background and we use the HED, which is holistic edge detection. We use that to generate what looks like a sketch. Um, and we have four sketches for each image, so varying levels of complexity to the sketch. And then we can use that latent vector as the ground truth label and pass the sketch into our feature extraction model, which in our case is going to be a VGG16 network, and then try to predict the latent vector. And the hope is that if we're good enough at predicting the latent vector, we could then feed that back into the style GAN and get a good looking image on the other end that's uh, consistent with what the sketch looks like. So there's a couple advantages of attempting this method is one is that it's data independent and that's setting quotation marks because implicitly there's a massive data set being used here. Since we're using a, a frozen style GAN, really the, the entire data set that the style GAN was trained on is kind of implicitly fed into this. Um, where these are rougher sketches and pixel to style to pixel uses. So you can see those images on the right. Uh, first what's clear is that they didn't remove their background and also their sketches are much more detailed than the sketches we're going for. Uh, deep face drawing, which is the figure on the left is a considerably less detailed, but their kind of drawback is that it's only front facing images. Um, and also both of these methods are actually really data intensive and computationally heavy and ours is much simpler than both of these. So the question is how can we evaluate this thing? Um, the issue with the, using a style GAN, a frozen style GAN is that you can't use any GAN evaluation methods. It just wouldn't make sense. Um, our, our resulting images are always going to be very good because style gain is very good. Since we're always using style gain, we can't use the inception score or the fresh hit inception distance or any of these other GAN methods to really get a good grasp of how well we're doing. We can use the mean squared error loss of our latent space. So when we try to predict the latent space, we'll get a mean squared error loss and the lowest mean squared error loss would win in this case. Um, and also there's the eye test where we could feed it a couple of sketches. There's, for example, the deep face drawing people have made handmade sketches where they fed it into their own network and we could try that out as well. Um, so we don't have any results yet, but please check back to our GitHub repo in about a day or two and we'll see what we achieved. Thank you for watching.